All right, now this recording is going to be for section 4.3, the factor and remainder theorem. All right, so we're going to take a look at um, how to do that through these 13 problems or three. Again, I always promote that you guys make sure that you're watching some of these videos that are offered to you. All right, mm -hmm. there's some good stuff in there. All right, now the first question that's offered right here is the polynomial long division. Um, long division is not friendly at all. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even promote it. I mean, unless you absolutely have to. In this case, you don't have to, but it says use the polynomial long division. So it wants to like teach you how to do long division, but I really am gonna just show you how to do long division, but avoid it at all costs because there's a lot more possibility of errors that can occur. All right, when long division occurs or synthetic division occurs, you have to make sure that you have all, what I say, all variables accounted for. So if it starts with x to the second power, it has to be to the first and to the zero, actually, because remember in the last lesson, I talked about how you can have, um, and actually it's right here, is x to the first or x to the zero is equal to one. And that becomes the leading co, uh, you know, then the leading coefficient is a constant. And what we want to do is realize that this is in descending order then. Now, the way you set it up is just like you do regular long division. So you're going to go ahead and set this up to 6x to the second with minus 35x my, or plus 15. Transcription errors can occur, so be careful with that. I, you know, it's nice to even actually verbalize it to you while I'm doing it because it happens that you can make a mistake. Now I'm going to do like I do normal long division. I put a little half box like this. And then what I'm going to divide by is x minus 5. Now what I ask myself is what do I have to multiply x to give me 6x to the second? And I write that here. Well, 6x is going to give me 6x times x is going to give me 6x squared. So then I put a line here. Okay. I'm trying to set this up very neat. And I'm going to multiply these two together. All right. So I multiply them together and I'm going to get this. All right. Now, what I do at this point is I bring this up and put this one over from what I was dividing. So this right here, I'm going to put this over here. And it, the way you could tell if you did it right is that the x square, you know, the x, which is to the first power, is going to be over x to the first power. <clears throat> now, what I do from this point is, and it's like I do regular long division with standard numbers, is that I bring this up and I subtract this basically from this. So I'm going to bring it up as its opposite. So it's going to be 6x squared, but I'm going to put a minus sign here. All right, and then I'm going to bring this up as positive 30x. I'll draw a line. This will cancel this out. And then I'm going to be left with adding these together, which is going to give me negative 5x. And then I bring this guy down. And then I hit reset. And I normally hit reset by putting a dashed line. And if I feel like I need to, recopy over x minus 5, I'll do so, just so I can make sure I'm keeping my structure clean, all right? Because I'm hitting reset. I'm no longer working with that. Now I'm thinking to myself, what do I have to multiply x to give me negative 5x? Well, that would be negative 5, right? So I'm multiplying that out. So negative 5 times x is going to give me negative 5x. And then negative 5 times negative 5 is going to give me positive 25. I go ahead and put the negative 5 up here. So I'm bringing this up here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And notice how the constant is over the constant. I'm going to bring this up as its opposite. So it's going to become positive 5x and then negative 25. All right, it was 25 positive, now it's comes to negative. Then I go ahead and add these together. 
All right. Now I no longer can ask myself, what can I multiply this to give me that? Because it's already now a degree power less than it. This is X to the zero power. This is X to the first. So once I exceed, this exceeds the power level of which I'm working with, then that becomes my remainder. That is my remainder. Now, how you handle remainders is it's negative. So I'm going to put the negative here. And then I'm going to put 10 over what we're dividing by. Now, if they have a plus sign already, like they do in this particular problem, then you'd put the plus sign here and the negative sign there. All right. No big deal. So our, our quotient that we have is always here. And then our remainder is that which remains and over what we divided by. So here's the answer. All right. 6x minus 5, exactly what we came up with. And then we have the negative 10, what we divided by. Now that is long division. Okay. Again, not the most ideal situation in handling this. Okay. Now going to take the same exact problem perhaps let me see okay well never mind i'm going to go ahead and move on to the next question because it automatically moves allows me to do it as a big division because i was not going to do long division again because long division is only reserved for when you do not have a poly polynomial that's in the form of c plus uh, or x plus c or x actually, x, x minus c actually. Because um, there's a reason why we do that. I'll, I'll tell you. It's the factor, okay? It's the factor which we're dividing by. But when we are dealing with division in synthetic, and we're in the form of x minus c, it doesn't have to be negative, by the way. Students think, oh my gosh, it has to be a negative number. No, it doesn't. It's, um, it's just the way we write the factor of what we're dividing by, all right? Because now, what we do is we take the opposite, the way we set up synthetic division, we take the opposite of this guy right here in the denominator, which is a positive six now, and we set that up in a half box by itself like that. And we take and make sure we're in descending order, which we're not. Look at this, three, four, no, that's not right. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in the right order. Let's put that in the right order on the top here. So it should be x to the fourth minus 5x to the third. My, and then we have, wait, we don't have an x to the second. So we're going to go ahead and put plus 0x to the second. And then go ahead and put minus 32x minus 19. So now when I write down all this, all right, we're going to go ahead and put 1, negative 5, 0, negative 32, and then negative 19. So we have all of our leading coefficients accounted for now. And that's important. There's five, there's four terms, but that means there's five terms because they're constant, because this is x to the 0. All right, you don't ever see it. So it goes four, three, two, one, zero. Now I put a line here and I put it, I drop the very first term down one. So I drop the first term down and then I go ahead and ask myself, well, this number here must multiply here to put that number here. So six times one is six. So it's Multiply, put the product here. So it's arrow here. And then I'm going to put a little multiplication symbol here. And then I'm going to add these two together. So I'm going to put a little plus sign there. So I put purposeful uh, things here. That's a little multiplication symbol. And that is a little plus symbol. So now I add these together. So negative 5 added to 6 is 1. Then I multiply. Look at this. I'm going to redo the entire structure. I'm going to multiply, all right, and put my product here. So I'm going to multiply. So it's multiplication. It actually should have been here. So that multiplication, 
Six times one is six. And then I go ahead and add. All right, adding that together, I'm gonna get six. And that's six times six, so look at that, I'm back to multiplication. Put the product there. So six times six is 36. Add these two together. They're opposite signs, by the way. I love it when I say add integers and students are like, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and add it then. That'll be 68. Well, it's opposite integers, so then you're supposed to, supposed to subtract. So then you're gonna get four. And then six times, now we're gonna multiply again, the last time, and then put the product here. Get 24, all right? And then add this together and you're gonna get five. All right, now I put a line right here. That's what I do, put a line there. Now, what degree power we started with was x to the fourth. So we should drop by one degree power. So x to the fourth then becomes x to the third. And then with the leading coefficients. So first, or one, x to the third, plus, see how one is positive. So one, positive one, x to the second. And then going ahead and having six is positive. So six, x to the first, and then positive four, x, uh, no, disregard, <laughs> sorry, I already took care of x. So there's the, the, the constant, and then I have plus, and then my remainder, 5, over what we originally divided by, which was x minus 6. And there is our quotient, quotient's right here, and our remainder is right there. Now, this would have been a significant heartache on us had we needed to do it the traditional long division. Synthetic division, way faster. All right, now let's take a look at our answer. All right, so we have 1x to the third, 1x to the second, 6x's, 4 constant, and then 5 over x minus 6. Exactly what it came up with. All right. So now synthetic division is used pretty quickly. Okay. I'm going to do it even faster now. Okay. So watch how fast this goes. Negative four and then six, 30, 15. Drop, multiply, add. Multiply and then add. Uh, yeah. All right. And we have our answer of 6x plus 6 remainder 9 over x plus 4. Um, by the way, I didn't make an error. See how this was supposed to be negative? I didn't put the negative, so I would have been wrong. Negative 9, and then x plus 4. That would have been called a transcription error. I know, uh, you know, this is more negative than that, but I didn't, I failed to write down a negative sign. Okay, and that happens, even to the best of us. You saw that in some of my other videos. I make mistakes, just like you do. I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm a human. So just try to avoid the mistakes. But you can see that that moves very, very quick. All right. So I'm going to let you have at it on this one. Just make sure you keep it in order. So you got to put the 5x to the third first and then negative 42x to the second and then the 15x minus 6. Change that from negative 8 to positive 8 and you get your answer of the following. All right. So if you have any questions on synthetic division anymore, let me know. All right. Uh, by the way, I would switch this to be x minus 6. It's just easier um, for the process for writing your proper uh, 
division out. Okay. Um, a lot of this looks like it's division. Now it's talking about solving the following polynomial equation given two is the zero of the polynomial function. Now, I've been teaching you how to use your crop and calculator. I'm going to continue to do that because it's important that you understand what is going on here. Now, while, while I'm going to go ahead and use the graph and calculator, uh, I will do this real quick um, to teach you what they're after, but I need to use the graph and calculator just to give you that support. When they say that two is a zero, then you're going to go ahead and use synthetic division to pull it out. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm double checking, making sure all things are accounted for, make sure I'm in descending order and that I didn't miss any signs or whatever. So now what I'm expecting to do automatically, I'm going to put a zero here because they told me it was a zero. All right. Now notice how I didn't switch the signs of this. It says the given two is a zero. I'm not switching that to negative two. Do not do that. This is not a factor of, of the polynomial. It's a zero. So it's automatically just taken as is. So drop. Multiply, add, multiply, and then add, multiply, add, and it gave us our expected zero. Now I have the polynomial x to the second because we started with x to the third, and then plus 4x minus 5. Now I could go ahead and factor this further by asking myself what two numbers multiply because they create negative 5 add up to positive four. So that would be x plus five, x minus one. So now these are two factors. My other two zeros are going to be negative five and positive one. So my answers are two, negative five, one are the solutions of this equation. Okay, that's the answer. Now, as I said, I want to show you what you're looking for on the graphing calculator, as I have in the other lessons. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this graph out. Now, I know it's hard to see, so I'm going to try to work with this. Let me autofocus. Okay, now again, I want to put x, and you use the caret symbol to get x to the third. And then it's plus. 2x to the second, and then negative 13 or subtraction, subtract 13x, and then plus 10. Now I go ahead and graph it. I'm trying to get the best image here. All right, that's the image that's best. Okay, I'm trying to give you guys a good clear picture. Now, if I go ahead and move my cursor, all right. I can almost land on it. Oh, I did. Good. Doesn't do that often. <laughs> Doesn't do that all the time. Negative 5. x is equal to negative 5. y is equal to 0. And then if I go ahead and go over to here, I can do the same thing. And I can't land on it exactly. Okay. But what I could do is land on it by simply hitting the second graph. And you can see the 0 come out now. Watch this. Negative 5, 0 for the y, because that's what you're looking for. 1, 0 for the, five, uh, for the y, so that's the answer, and then the 2. And those are all the same answers that we, we see right up on our screen here. Okay, So th the calculator can generate those answers without doing a single bit of work. All right. Now, I'm not promoting laziness. I'm not promoting misunderstanding of concept either. What I'm, I am promoting is proper allocations of um, and utilizations of your resources that I'm saying that you're allowed to use, which any you're allowed to use a grammar calculator on any uh, upper level divisional test um, or class. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at number eight. So it's saying that one six is a zero. Now, again, that might seem a little intimidating, especially the fact that now we might not be able to utilize our our calculators so easily. But let's go ahead and see what happens when we look at our graph and calculator anyway. All right. Let's see. 36. Um, let me do a second. I'm sorry. All right. And then I have uh, 
one, or two. All right, that's a plus sign, plus I have 54 x and then I have negative 10 or 12 excuse me all right I'm double checking making sure I get all the numbers right and let's see what happens when we graph it okay now it's I do have this in there um let me you probably weren't able to focus on what I was putting in there so I have it in there, okay? Now I can go ahead and hit second graph, and I see that I have negative two and negative one as factors because the, the resulting value of y sub one is zeros. So I don't see that one six at all because it's too small. The reason I know one six exists of some sort because see how there's a negative 12 right there and a, a positive 180, excuse me? Um, though that that sign change tells me there exists some zero between this that that point of zero and one. By the way, over here, there exists a zero between one and zero, or zero and one. Now I'd be like to say it. So what I could do is I can come back into here um, and calculate for that zero by just going over here, and I'm looking for one, one six. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that one, and I'm going to hit that. And look at that. If you take and calculate one six, it, it's going to give you uh, 0 0.16666 continuous. All right. And how do I know that? Well, I've, I've worked with math a long time. I know it is. Um, here it is. Okay. So anyway, we have the answers without any work. Okay. I just provided you all the uh, the answers without even putting one single, you know, writing piece down, all right? Um, you can trace it, but sometimes tracing doesn't land your calculational values. Like, it, it, it follows along the, the graph, but it bounces real fast. Like, look at that. It doesn't, doesn't give you those exact values that you're looking for. It's, it, tracing, all that trace does, it follows the graph. It, um, and you do that anyway while you're, see how it's, it's tracing the, the graph, but it's bouncing. It's not landing on your perfect zeros. I hate that. I mean, I think trace is almost a, uh, like a, a waste of time. I, I don't even understand why tracing is available. Um, anyway, because you trace it anyway. That's why I'm saying you're, you're tracing while you're moving your graph. Uh, so anyway. So uh, that is that. And then, like I said, some of this um, you really could do with the graphing calculator. I mean, now I know some of you are really just, oh my goodness, Dr. Demery, I can't stand fractions. They're the, the worst. I mean, I'm not good at them. And so you get freaked out. So I'm going to teach only for that reason am I going to teach it this way. I mean, so let's go ahead and look at it. So we have negative 5 fourths. And then you have uh, negative 80. I'm like double checking all my values. They're all there. So negative 80, uh, positive 76, positive 62, negative 40. And then I'm done with that. I know I'm going to get a zero at the end here because it already says it's a zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put line zero. And I, don't, I better get 40 here. If I don't get 40, I've done something wrong, right? Because that's the only way I'm going to get a zero. So I drop this down. And the thing is, is that if you're not comfortable with fractions, then you do have the means of using your graph and calculator even for that. I mean, at least for that. But the way to do it is take the 80 and divide it by 5 and multiply it against 4. All right. Um, so that's what you can do with that because you need to multiply this together. Right. So negative times the negative is positive. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 80, divide it by 5, and then I'm going to take and multiply that by uh, four okay and then that's going to give me 64 i put 64 up here okay now i go ahead and and this is positive so i'm going to go ahead and put this okay i'm going to add this together all right uh yeah making sure i have all that right so this is going to give me that and then i'm going to take and uh put in 
I don't like what I'm coming up with so far. But anyway, uh, we have that. And then and this is going to give us uh, 140. Half, half of 140. So this is negative. OK, yeah, I like it now. OK, so half of, um, so I'm going to multiply 140 times. And I can go ahead and multiply it against 5 fourths as well. So I can put 5 divided by 4 if I want in my calculator. And it gives me 112. All right. And then I could take um, 112 and subtract 62 from it in my calculator and get 50. And that's negative. And negative times a negative is positive, right? And then I could take 5 goes into 50 10 times. 10 times 4 is 40. And then that's the magic number that we're looking for. So now we have a negative, or I should say, yeah, I have a negative 80 square, uh, you know, x squared plus 140. And then I have minus 50. All right, that is my qu uh, quadratic. Now I can divide immediately, I can divide this by 20. Uh, not 20, excuse me, but uh, no, I could, I could divide it by, no, I can't divide it by that either. By, I can divide it by, um, by what, just 10. Let's go ahead and just do 10. I divide it by 10, I get this. By the way, there's an X here. All right, at least I get that. I can even actually divide it by negative 10. And because we're setting it equal to zero, right? So that way our leading coefficient is positive. So I can go like this and change that because I'm lazy with, I don't like leading coefficients of negative. So I'm switching the signs to everything. So now you can go ahead and factor, right? Or use the quadratic if you have to, okay? Um, it's, it's just however you need to do it. Now, I've already taught you how to factor. I know how to do you know, you know how to do all that. But notice how I no longer need to worry about the fraction part. Okay. So I wanted you to see that. And and I, I know that you can do the rest of that. Okay. So I'm not worrying about that part. I was just trying to help you get through your fear of, of fractions. Because that, that seems to be a causal problem for a lot of students. They get freaked out with um, when it comes down to fractions. So positive. 76x and then 62, um, excuse me, plus, and that's x squared. I, I'm messing up. Okay, so square, x squared plus 62x. You can't see what I'm doing anyway. <laughs> I, I don't care. You can't. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm hiding it from you. So um, you can't see all my mistakes. So I enter that in. That looks right, all right? Now I hit uh, graph and see what it looks like. And I'm definitely getting some interesting values here, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit second, calculate zero to get that, oops, uh, don't want that, second, calculate zero. And I wanna see what I'm gonna get right when I go from here to here. And I get 0.5. All right. So now I have my answer of negative four fifths, because that's part of the answer that we we're already given. And then I have one half. And then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to calculate for another zero. Okay. So second calculate two gives me now the ability to calculate for zero here. So I'm going to go here and go here. And I'm going to get my answer of 1.25. And then we know 1.25 is the same like one and a quarter. And that is the same thing as writing five fourths. All right. So that's that is that is a way of writing how to do it without needing to worry about the the process. I could have answered all of that without even using the calculator or without using any writing just using the calculator. So here are the answers that I just gave you, OK? The 5 fourths, the negative five, 4 fifths was already given to us, and then the 1 half, OK? So that's number 9. And then, like I said, I've gone over a lot of these problems 
in the sense of helping you understand that you have to use synthetic division, you can use your calculator, you can use the video and all that, okay? So um, use the graph followings and solve for the function. All right, so this is all the solution set. They're looking for the solution set. It's going to be negative four, negative three, two. So they're already giving you the answer by just giving you the graph. And that's kind of the way I've been doing it with the graph and calculator is saying, hey, you can use your graph and calculator. All right, that you don't need to sit there and sweat small stuff. And that's what they're doing on these last couple of problems. Okay. So, man, now they're, they're saying negative seven, six, and five because they're, they're saying, well, you can pull out the negative seven and they're not giving the rest of it. They're, they're making you have to go ahead and use synthetic division, pull that out, but you can use your graphing calculator for that equation. Okay. That's all I want to talk about in this one. So that's the lesson for lesson. Um, three or four, three, excuse me. All right.